number them, measure them, mark them, cut them, place them, weld them. Another day of grand weld paint repeat. <laughs> Can you do that one more time? As you can see behind me, we finished placing all of the bracing. <laughs> that rhymes, unintentional. New day, doing new things, learning new stuff. So if you were a kid and you liked to play with mud and or clay, this will be your jam. <laughs> Now we just cross our fingers that it doesn't rain. All right, so giddy up, here we go. A few years ago, we decided to quit the rat race and venture down a completely unfamiliar path in life. We sold almost all of our possessions, renovated a camper van, and toured the US looking for a piece of land to start our journey. After almost two years, we found our piece of paradise in the Pacific Northwest, and Pacific Pines Ranch was born. Follow along as we chase our dreams to build an off-grid shipping container home, and to see our projects and adventures along the way. As we like to say on the ranch, the joy is in the journey. What's up everybody? Another beautiful day on Pacific Pines Ranch. Every day is beautiful when you're building your dreams, <laughs> even the hard days. Anyways, so we've uh, went and exchanged the welder, so everything's all good there. And we were able to finish what we were doing. It was just a crazy day. We had to like finish what we were doing and then drive, you know, a few hours to go exchange the welder. So I didn't really have time to set up the camera and film and take my time and everything. So let me just show you what we did. So as I mentioned before, up here will be, let me go on the side so you can see it better. Up here in between the I beams, will be some will be uh, basically a floating slab so we used this flat bar right here and right here to basically use as a guide and a form for when we pour the slab in there this one is sloped this way i don't really know if you can tell it's about six and a half inches on that side and four just above four on this side so the water will go out if there's any water that goes on the balcony so we got that done we got that painted that's all good yesterday we started working on the floor so how the floor will be is you see this panel here we're gonna use all the leftover panels that we have from the build lay them across the floor in between each I-beam and kind of stitch weld them all together to create the floor. So this piece, I'll show you where it goes right now. Actually, I'll just climb up here so I can show you. There's ladders everywhere. Just a ladder party up in here. All right, so as you can see, we got the I-beams down there. Right here where the C-channel kind of makes this box is actually some stairs to go down into the garage. So there won't be anything here except stairs. But on the other side and in between this one, this one, this one, all the way to the, the balcony over there will be those panels. So we're gonna go put them on top this wall is kind of at an angle, so I'm going to need to plasma cut the last panel on this side to line up with the angle of the wall. And uh, yeah, put them all in place, weld them together. And next after that, we'll be setting up the rebar for the slab, I think. So yeah, 
it's a good way to use the panels you know right now the price of wood is just like insane so we kind of changed the design a little bit to use some of the materials that we have on site and uh yeah i mean pretty cool we're gonna do concrete floor anyways so might as well do all of it <laughs> but the inside floor won't be as thick as this this will be a proper slab the inside will just be self-leveling concrete so anyways so I am going to get all my stuff set up, get my gear on, then we're going to go through the panels, pick out which panels that we're going to use, number them, measure them, mark them, cut them, place them, weld them. Another day of grand weld paint repeat. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's go. Good job, babe. Thank you. <laughs> Time to party. Done? Yeah! Yay! Good job. So now that all the panels are plasma cut to size, we are just working on placing them and making sure everything lines up before we weld everything together. We always try to work as a team to balance the workload, which means that Viant usually does most of the grinding and I do most of the welding. I've mentioned this a few times, but for those of you that don't know, all of these corrugated panels are what is left over from the cutouts of our house. So pretty much all the openings that we cut out, these are the remnants of that.
So we are welding the panels to each other and also to the I-beams to secure them in place. Long day, but we did it. Uh, well, no, we didn't finish, but we finished what we wanted to finish today. So, as you can see, we got the corrugated panels up and welded into place for these sections. These sections right here, we will need to do those um, next. So, we will work on those. And yeah, looking good. We will fill in the gaps um, where the corrugation goes up and down with spray foam. So when we pour the concrete, the uh, concrete won't escape out of the bottom. So yeah, whew, long day, we are dead, all of us. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna wind down, grab something to eat, call it a day, and get back at it another time, so. Good job. Huh, peeps? What do you think? What do you think about that? <laughs> Until next time. So this area is going to be on the exterior and it's going to be a balcony for one of the bedrooms. Everything will start to make sense as we progress in building this entrance structure. I know right now it's kind of confusing and it's hard to imagine what's going on, but I promise it will all make sense in time. All right, so we are approaching the last two panels for the pan floor. We actually got really lucky and weirdly enough, we swapped these two and they fit perfect, which is, I don't know, it's kind of ironic. They were measured and placed to be on the opposite side, but actually we switched them and they kind of line up great. There's a little bit of a gap right there, but we'll just fill that in with um, spray foam before we for the slab, so we are going to weld the last two pieces in. And then our plans call for some studs to be welded every foot on the I-beams. So we bought a bunch of studs, weld those in. After we are going to um, paint what we welded, and I think that'll be it for today. So. 
Still got quite a bit to do, but everything's going well, and we're just uh, trucking along. All right, here we go. Can you do that one more time? <laughs> All right, so another day working on the pan floor. As you can see, we got all of the panels situated. And now we are just following our plans. Our plans call for some studs welded onto the beams to anchor the slab that we will pour. So. Vion's gonna clean where I have to weld these little studs. There's little, well, studs, like that, weld them in place. And then after that, I think we are either going to start to set up the bracing for underneath or start to mix the concrete. So I don't know, we'll see. See how that plays out. So anyways, Vyant, he's gonna clean for me because he's the best husband ever. And then I, I'm going to put all my welding stuff on and weld them in place. And then we will clean all the welds that I did and give them a quick layer of paint just for an extra layer of insurance. <laughs> and yeah. All right, so giddy up, here we go. Get to work. Can I stop? Yeah, go. Oh, you go Hello, hello, and welcome to another day on Pacific Pines Ranch. As you can see behind me, we finished placing all of the bracing, <laughs> that rhymes, unintentional, for um, doing the pan floor upstairs. So I know it seems like it's not a lot. This is just really better safe than sorry. We got all of the vertical pieces of wood, some are pretty big, like five by five. So they're pretty beefy, holding up the pan floor. They're all level, everything's good with that. Everything is screwed into place and pretty much ready to go in that aspect. So today, 
we are doing something well i feel like a lot of the times we're doing stuff for the first time but this is stuff we're really doing for the first time we are mixing our own concrete <laughs> normally when we do concrete we have the truck come because everything that we've done is just really big scale of concrete and would have taken like thousands of bags to mix so way easier to have the the truck come but for what we're doing today not so many bags so we have our concrete mixer right there we have our bags of concrete in the back of our truck that we need to bring over here and we are going to be filling in the space where the beam sits on the concrete wall and we'll uh, God, I don't think I can see and we'll also be let me go up there and show you oh dang it's wet and we'll also be filling in the little gaps where the pan floor corrugation has a gap <laughs> So yeah, you can see like pretty much where all of the panels sit on the beam. There's a little gap where they go up. So we are going to put concrete in there. So when we go to pour all of it and vibrate it and everything, it's not just gonna go out the bottom. <laughs> so as you can see, Viant painted where I welded and the little bits that needed an extra layer of paint. So everything is looking good. This paint is really awesome. So yeah. New day, doing new things, learning new stuff. So I'm gonna grab all the materials that we need, get everything set up and uh, play with concrete. <laughs> Got the first couple, got the first bag of concrete mixing up in there. Bye, Aunt. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey. He already went up there and put some of the, uh, the concrete in that opening. First side, almost full, getting near the top. Looking good so far. We already vibrated it once. Now we're just adding a little bit to the top, vibrate it again, and uh, yeah, move on to the side.
let's do another mix. All right, we got the third one. So we did that one over there, this one right here, and now we are on this one. We mixed this one a little bit too wet, so we're going to adjust on the next one because there's clearly too much water in this, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It'll just take a little bit longer to set. So we definitely don't have to vibrate this one because if we do, it'll just all come leaking out of the back. This one kind of did already. It was fine, I was back there mitigating the, <laughs> the leakage. And we had a casualty. Uh, the one of the buckets full of concrete Viant was carrying it up the ladder and the handle broke off and the concrete spilled out. So we did our best to uh, scoop up the remains, but yeah. So my big strong husband is bringing all of the L the last of the concrete bags so we can mix them in the mixer and do the last couple openings. So we have to finish this one, we have that one, and then we have two more, this one and that one over there. And then after that, we'll see how many bags we have left. We need to fill in these gaps here, under here, and like a little bit around where there's some uh, space. And uh, yeah, so for that we will have to mix the concrete very stiff, not at all what we just did. <laughs> but yeah, mix it really stiff so that way we can, you know, build it up to be what it needs to be. And uh, yeah, so far so good. Really messy. It's kind of fun, brings back memories of as a child playing with like mud and clay, but it's just like an adult version of that. <laughs> So if you were a kid and you liked to play with mud and or clay, this will be your jam. <laughs> Get out there, play with some concrete. <laughs> Are you a concrete master now? Oh yeah, babe. Concrete master. <laughs> all right. All good. At least for this part. We got these areas full of concrete. There's two over there. One here. One there. One there and one there. Everything went well. Pretty happy with how they came out. Nothing bad happened. So that's always good. <laughs> so now we are going to take the concrete that we mixed that's like a little bit more firm and put it in the gaps um, of the corrugation so that way when we pour the slab it doesn't gush out of the the sides or the bottom and fail. <laughs> so, woohoo! All right, all done for the day. We finished putting the concrete in the spots to fill the gap for when we pour the slab. And it went really well. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So it'll be a great way and a cheaper way than using spray foam. Because if we would have used spray foam, it would have been like $200 probably in the little like spray foam cans. <laughs> they go fast. 
Anyways, now we just cross our fingers that it doesn't rain because it's getting super misty and sometimes even though it's not like physically raining, the mist accumulates on the trees and it makes rain <laughs> in a way. And yeah, so now that all of the holes of the slab are filled in, if it rains, <laughs> this will become a pool. So just please the weather gods be on our side this time and please don't make us have a pool in the morning. <laughs> I mean, I would love to have a pool, you know, but like not where we're supposed to be working and pouring concrete. So that's it for today. Tomorrow's a new day, and I think we'll be doing the rebar for this uh, pan floor slash floating slab. So, gonna enjoy our night and get back at it tomorrow. All right, new day, working on the pan floor. And this is the final moment. We're gonna see if up there is covered in water, if we have a pool. <laughs> Drum roll. And we do not, thankfully. It's a little bit wet. There's a little bit of water over there. A little bit of water in there, but it's not too bad. Definitely manageable. But because it was all wet, it's looking like the concrete, um, it's definitely set, but it's probably still a little bit wet. Yeah. Concrete is amazing stuff. Whew. All right, so what we are going to be doing today is we are going to take all the rebar and place all the rebar here <laughs> where it needs to be for the slab that we will pour for the pan floor so we have quite a bit of rebar and we have uh, little concrete dobies to make them stay off of the bottom of the, the pan floor so we're going to measure where the rebar has to go cut them if necessary i think i'm just going to cut them with the plasma cutter like why not i mean plasma cutter angle grinder they both have their pros and cons but kind of feeling a little bit like we don't want to be the the plasma cutter is like way less effort and it's way quieter so i'm just gonna do that why not the rebar is not that big anyways so we're gonna cut them into place, uh, we're gonna cut them to size, put them in their place, and pretty much after that, we will be basically ready to do the concrete. So, if all goes well in the next few days, we should pour this slab. Woo! <laughs> all right, let's go.
So me and Viant just passed the welder back and forth to make it a little bit easier for us when all of the rebar is set up it's kind of hard to move around. And Viant soon learned why it's important to wear long sleeves when you weld because he got his skin a little bit sunburnt or weld burnt rather. You live you learn. Hello, good morning, another day out on the ranch. All right, so today I think is going to be the last day of setting everything up for the pan floor. Tomorrow we are scheduled to pour the concrete. So the last things that we have to do, as you can see, we got all the rebar and all the concrete dobies set up. So that's pretty much ready to go. So what we need to do is kind of tape the edges so that they don't just get completely destroyed with concrete so we can clean them a little bit easier. We already have to repaint a few places, but that's that's no big deal. But we don't want to have to like repaint everything. So we're going to try to minimize the <laughs> the splatter, I guess. And then the last thing that we have to do is here this balcony for this room slopes that way so what we need to do is set up a guide on this side for the screed i think it's called anyways the piece of wood that you like move to <laughs> make the concrete kind of go into place i always forget the name it's a weird name so yeah we're gonna set up a piece of wood to be a guide that side it's already ready to go because the flat bar we cut it to have the slope already on it so we'll set it on that side and then over here we're gonna have to do like a, an, a piece of two by four um, clamped to these two poles and then like a little guide on the screed because it's gonna have to sit on top of the screed uh, of the two by four so we're gonna set that up we're going to tape what we need to tape and then we need to kind of set up a little bit of scaffolding <laughs> along this side of the container so we can access up here when we need to. 
and yeah that is pretty much it yeah time to get rolling all right so we got our little guide right here subtle frankenstein piece so this piece can sit on top of the c channel and this when we scrape the the top off and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover the sides with plastic we already got some plastic there we're gonna cover here and just like a little bit around so it will minimize the amount of cleaning that we have to do and yeah after that call it a night and tomorrow will be poor day cross our fingers everything goes good so there it is Another step complete in our crazy container build. If you'd like to know why we are building the entrance structure this way, check out our previous video where I explain why. Be sure to subscribe to see if these panels will hold up us and eight yards of concrete. Pretty epic. Here's what's coming up next on Pacific Pines Ranch. Good morning, good morning. So today is poor day and as you can see, it's freaking raining. <laughs> Help support our channel by leaving a comment, liking, and sharing this video. As always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up with our projects and adventures on the ranch. We put out new videos every Saturday and sometimes even during the week, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Okay, bye!